thanks for joining us for the second episode of Nearing the Next Step, the show where we explore the obstacles and opportunities that await us as we continue our chase for change. Big shout out to Tanya Mayberry, Stefan Palmer, and Janita McGuigan, my very first guests here on Nearing the Next Step. I'm Brian Martin, and I'm serving as the host, but also as the student. Tanyao, who has proven successful in several ventures thus far, wants to be a published children's book author. Stefan Palmer, CEO of Youth on Fire Incorporated, is looking to assemble a team that will propel his nonprofit organization to the next level. And Janita, as a young mother, wants to start a 501c3 that will help young women properly navigate life. Impressive? Yes. Impossible? No. In the previous episode, we explored each of their dreams and how they got to where they are now. We also examined the obstacles that they're facing in taking their next steps. I think we can all agree that next steps can be scary, but your life doesn't have to be a slow motion horror movie. There are tools that you can employ to live life at the larger level. Let's jump right in and go deeper. Tanya, Stefan, and Janita, in preparing for the show, I asked each of you to perform some exercises. No, they weren't burpees and planks, even though those would be good at the beginning of the year. What I asked you to do was to tell us about your fears, tell us about your views on failure, and the importance of growth in your lives. The exercises were designed around three tips that I've mentioned in the videos that I posted on Facebook in the weeks leading up to the show. Let's review those tips now. Tip number one, if your next step doesn't scare you, you might be moving in the wrong direction. Tip number two, you just might get it wrong. And tip number three, you've got to go to grow. When we come back from this commercial break, we'll dive right in to tip number one. Hi, my name is Wendy Wallace and I have a question for you. Are you ready for your next opportunity? Whether it is your career or business goals, Wallace Career Coaching uses a holistic approach to assist and consult you on your career or business venture. I bring over 15 years of corporate, nonprofit, state, and government agency experience and am confident that I can support your individual career or business needs. Wallace Career Coaching was just launched in August of 2020 and in just five short months, just five months, I have had the honor of serving almost 60 clients who have landed jobs that have helped them achieve their career and personal goals. I believe that with the right resources, everyone has the ability to reach their potential. Services that I provide include professional resumes and cover letters that land you the interview, interview preparation, compensation negotiation strategies, LinkedIn profile design and edits, career mapping. This is where we would create actionable goals that you can achieve in a short amount of time. I also provide new business plan development as a service because I know that there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there just like me. I also provide virtual workshops in customer service project management, time management, business operations, and group career coaching. If you need someone to help you reach your career or business goals, I'm your person, this girl right here. Check out my website at www.wwallaceconsulting.com. Again, the website is www.w wallaceconsulting.com. Be empowered to reach your potential. I'll 
I'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Brian Martin, host of Nearing the Next Step. And we're talking with people who are looking to expand their horizons. Let's get right into the first tip that we can use to stay focused on our quest for our best. Janita, we'll start with you. Tip number one is all about recognizing fear. One of the questions I often ask myself when the fear seems to be debilitating in my life is what's the worst that could happen? As you take the necessary steps to fulfill your dream, starting and operating a 501c3 organization focused on mentoring young women, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is um, I not start the 501c3 and um, so many young women that I see, um, they're lost. Um, today's society of young girls, I'm seeing that um, a lot of them have, lack uh, self-confidence, self-esteem, um, and they feel like that they have to have someone in order to make it in today's society. Um, and so if I didn't start this so that I could bring everyone together and we all um, accomplish great things, then um, somebody else might. Um, I recently heard from someone, um, if you don't start it, then God will allow someone else to do it. And if this is my dream, something that God has allowed me to um, want to do, why shouldn't I start it? Wow, that, that really sums it up, right? There's the idea of what if I never get this off the ground? And you've really done a great job of encapsulating that fear and tapping into it at its fiercest. So this exercise is all about us learning to examine our fears deconstructing them, recognizing that when we get up close to our fears, we begin to understand them in a new way and even perhaps gain fuel from them. So here's another question. Tanya, what would failure look like for you? So I thought about this, this, uh, this tip for a while, this question, um, to me, uh, Failure is, is a step to success. Um, it's, it's, it's meant to be sort of like a jumping off point um, for me. Um, it, it's the next stairwell or stairway to success. So, you know, there, there are folks that view failure as, as a negative thing. Um, but then I see failure as sort of a positive thing. Um, because at the end of the day, you're trying to do something that you love to do, that you desire to do. So failure is, to me, is, is something that's positive. So I don't see a negative or a neg uh, anything negative about failure. You know, Tanya, it really sounds to me with, with the answer and the insight that you've just provided that you've already had the courage to examine your fear and to really uncover it, its depth, the breadth and length of it. And when we do that, we begin to recognize that fear has its limits. And then we can do what you just said. We can begin to use that fear of failure and even failing itself as fuel for the next attempt. So Stefan, let's, let's take it over to you now. You've already started your organization and you've been running it for nearly four years. You along with the other guests have already taken scary steps. So what's your greatest fear in taking your next step? Well, I've been in conversations the last couple of months to get new contracts for the fatherhood program, the youth program for the mentoring and tutoring and college prep. Um, my biggest fear is getting these contracts and not having an effective team to actually execute them. Um, I know I can do it by myself, but that's not the way it was set up at, in the program. I would like to have people that I know can step up and do the work, have the experience to do the work and the patience 
to work with the fathers, the young men, the young women, and the mothers in the community to help them break down some of their walls to achieve the healing process that they want to, to be open to going back to education and just growth personally. Um, yeah, my biggest fear is not having an effective team with these next steps. Wow. I think really part of the exercise here is really listening to ourselves verbalize and vocalize what our fear is. A lot of times it's inside our minds and it's wreaking havoc on our thought processes. But then when we actually mouth the words, the fear almost becomes manageable to a greater degree. So thank you, Stefan, for pointing out what your greatest fear is and also recognizing that you're not going to let that stop you. So let's go on to our second tip, which invites you to investigate your views on the F word, failure. So Stefan, let's stick with you for just a moment. How do you view failure? I view failure as a second option to achieve what you wanted to in the beginning. Um, and in, in the beginning with Youth on Fire, I won't say failure didn't cause me to be stagnant, but what I learned is when you fail, it gives you an opportunity to step back, go through the process of everything you did, see where you went wrong, and pick yourself up and do it again. Um, you'll never succeed if you allow failure to be your worst enemy. So therefore, you have to use it as a friend. Okay, you didn't like it when I did this, but I changed this. How do you feel about this? With each failure, you, get, you, you take a step higher in the right direction. You know, I hear a lot of... Oh, I thought somebody said something. Um, you know, I hear a lot of similarity in your answer, Stefan, with the answer that Tanyel provided. And it leads me to believe that successful people adopt a similar viewpoint as they move forward. It's e absolutely essential to taking that next step that our mentality and that our way of processing events in our lives is a healthy approach. So with that, Janita, we're gonna come to you now. We've heard from Tanya, we've heard from Stefan. I really wanna ask you this question. Would you consider your view of failure healthy or unhealthy? Um, a little bit of both uh, because um, you kind of think about things and it makes you nervous going to the next step. But then you hear encouraging words from like Stefan and Tanel, um, how they're progressing and then um, it makes you move forward. I can do this, you know, so it's a little bit of both for me. Thank you for that honesty, because I think for many of our viewers, it's the idea of I'm not always one and I'm not always the other. I'm not always hot and I'm not always cold. And recognizing that in life there is a balance. So your answer helps us to recognize that there are aspects of our lives that are healthy and then aspects of our lives that may not be as healthy. And when we recognize that, then we're able to more successfully manage our thought processes. And that's absolutely critical to success. So thank you, Janita, for that. Now, Tip number two helps us realize that failing is inevitable. Now, I wasn't there when you all learned to walk. Shoot, I was barely there when I learned to walk. But I'm certain that you fell before you found your balance. So everybody everywhere has failed. Yet, we celebrate those who've succeeded. So to sum it up, failing is a part of success. But success is not a part of failure. It's important that we distinguish between failing and failure. In one case, we made a mistake. In the other, we see ourselves as the mistake. But there's another way that we can view failing. Tanya, you're a multi-talented artist with accomplishments under your belt. Has there ever been a time when you made a mistake and it resulted in something good. Yeah, I thought about this um, for a while and it's nothing to do with art at all. It has to do with just my regular everyday life. So we had, um, I was making Christmas dinner. 
I was actually going shopping for Christmas dinner. Um, and it was me and my husband and the kids. And I was shopping and buying a bunch of food, like tons of food. And my husband looked at me and he was like, what are you doing? You're, we're, it's just four of us eating Christmas. It's, we're, we're in the middle of COVID. So I was like, I don't know. I just feel the need to, to buy a bunch of food. So he, he, and he just shook his head and he kind of went with it. And so I made all this food, created, all, you know, baked macaroni and cheese, pot roast, some um, collard greens, things like that. It was like a whole thing. And then I made, um, I can't remember what the dessert was that I made. Um, and so my husband looked at me, he's like, what are we going to do with all this food? Well, fast forward, my parents, the same day, this is Christmas day, my parents lost power. Um, had no power in the house. Something happened, some freak thing over the, over in the middle of the night happened where um, I think it was a pretty bad windstorm that we had or something in, 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 in Danbury and they lost power. So my mom was not able to use her stove. So because I made all this, this huge dinner, I had enough food to send over to my parents and send over to my brother who also live in the same town as I. So it, was sort of like a mistake to buy all that food, but it turned it, the result. It was worth it because family was able to eat and I didn't have any leftovers. So, which was good. Now, Tanya, I know you, and I know that you're a woman of faith. I know Janita. I know that she is a woman of faith. I know Stefan. I know that he is a man of faith. So when I hear that story, I'm sure we all have stories that we could tell that are similar in scope. We begin to recognize that really we can take this next step, can't we? Because somehow, some way, even without us knowing, even when we trip up, even when we stumble, even when we do something that doesn't quite make sense or doesn't fit our sequence of events that we have in mind, it's still working toward a goal. It's still going in the direction that we need to go. So thank you for that insight. And I have to actually thank all of you for providing some insightful responses to our first two tips. It should be comforting to all of us that we're going to mess up as we step up. But if that's not comforting enough, we should be encouraged by the fact that something positive can happen even when things seem disastrous. When we come back after a word from our sponsor, we'll examine our final tip and hear from our guests. I first heard about Hope Brings Peace through a physician, a friend of mine, a dermatologist, who was introduced to the, say the, person we invented or oh, we've thought about this her name Tanya Michael and I had a meeting with Tanya and found that her story was compelling she had gone through chronic kidney disease dialysis and then got a kidney transplant and her journey you know made her start this compelling business of wanting to bring hope to our patients, not only with chronic kidney disease, but on dialysis and eventually transplantation. I understand it. I can identify with it. When you have a condition like kidney failure, it's a chronic condition. It doesn't go away. If, when you're on dialysis, you stay alive with dialysis. And this is sometimes what you live your life for. And some people, most people get, a lot of people get depressed. Their families are involved. You know, a lot of things do happen. And I'll be honest with you, some of them just lose hope. So this whole thing about wanting to get our patients be active in their society, pursue their dreams, and feel good about themselves, is always been that challenge for all of us the kidney doctors, the kidney nurses, the social workers, the dietitians, virtually every professional involved in taking care of our patients on dialysis. So this concept of hope brings peace cannot anymore resonate than I have put it in. Someone 
with a compelling story and wanting to step past that message on, you can live well. There's hope for you. You can do what you want to do. And turn this into a drama. You know, it's such a bigger story than one would have expected. And I think all dialysis patients should be able to see this. They should be able to draw from the inspiration of Ms. Michael and use that as a platform to make sure that they can do things in their lives. Also, family members and friends should see this because they are continuing to be the resource and the hope that these patients have. As a kidney specialist, the struggle we have is not the science of finding out what kidney disease people have. It's not a science. We're all smart, we've all gone to school, but it is the art of making sure that these patients believe in what you want to do. That art of making them understand there's life after kidney disease. And there's no way I can say this can be put better than this hope brings peace. Thank you for returning with us to Nearing the Next Step, the show where we examine the challenges and the benefits from taking your next step. So we've covered two tips so far. The first tip dealt with fear, with recognizing that fear has its limits and that it doesn't have to be debilitating. In fact, we can look at fear with a newfound respect. We also spoke in tip number two about failure. And this too is something that is manageable. In the story that Tanya told, we see that sometimes there are moments when everything doesn't make sense, but it works out for good. Imagine then if we had that same viewpoint when we have failings in our pursuit of progress, we'll still be able to move forward in our dream. So let's move on to tip number three. You've got to go to grow. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to bust a move. We've got all these dreams, but no drive. It's hard to get out of park. Tip number three forces us to confront this tough truth. Your next step involves growth, and growth involves taking the next step. Tanya, you're a supermodel wife, a loving mother, and an accomplished artist. Most people would be satisfied with that. Do you feel you've grown comfortable in your current position in life? Yes, I, I feel like I've grown comfortable um, in a sense that I work a nine to five and that's, for me, that's comfortable. Um, I, I know what to, to expect in a nine to five job. I know what to expect on any given day. However, with illustrating, with becoming an uh, an author, I don't know what to expect. Um, and that's the part that makes me um, uncomfortable. Um, it's not, it's the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen next. And my desire is to, to leave a nine to five to fully focus on becoming an author and doing that nine to five. Um, that is a huge desire of mine. So, um, I feel like I've grown to the point that I know that that's what I want to do. Um, but right now, um, trying to figure out how to monetize that gift um, is the part that I, I do struggle with. And that's the part that makes me uncomfortable, not knowing how to do that. So let me see if I understand you correctly, Tanya. There's a degree of comfort in your life. It sounds to me like the dream is a source of discomfort. Am I reading that correctly? Yes. Yes. It 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 has a it has it, it's a mix, right? It's it's the fact that I'm comfortable with the fact that I am an artist. I I love that part of me. It's the part that trying to take that gift and monetizing that gift. Where do I go? because I have different folks that come to me and say, well, Tanya, you could do this. Well, Tanya, you could do that. Well, Tanya, you could do this. And it's like, I hear all these different sounds and voices and they tell me what to do, but then it's like, no, it, it's so distracting. 
So my, my problem is taking that gift, monetizing it, and, and taking that step that makes sense to me and to my family. Um, because right now, my nine to five pays the bills. So <laughs> I need, my, <laughs> I need my, my gift to, to do the same. I need my gift to make the same amount that I'm making now. So yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things in that. And this, I think, Tanya, is where I have to say thank you. Because I'm sure that it's not just me, but our viewers as well feel the same way, right? It's the idea of I'd have to leave this and pursue that. And this is familiar, but that is uncertain. So let's, let's examine this a little further. Janita, let's go to you. Obviously, there are things about your current life that you enjoy. You work in the healthcare field, which is a stable industry. You're a mother with adult children. You're a respected member of your family and faith community. So the tough question is, do you have more to gain from your next step or more to lose? Um, I would say I have more to gain because for me, it would be fulfilling just to um, just help that one person that, you know, may not be able to navigate um, just through day-to-day life. Um, There's so many things going on with uh, the children these days with um, having to stay home from school and um, not being able to have contact with friends and things of that nature. If I have, um, there are things to gain and there are things to lose because, as far as gaining is concerned, um, I can help the next young woman gain the confidence that she needs to be able to move further in life. Um, the losing part would be um, if I didn't start it and there's that young woman that had the opportunity and I didn't give them that opportunity to be able to gain in life. So I would say it would be some of both. Now, see, you bring up something very interesting, right? Because again, we see the full scope of life, that it's not just one answer or the other. It's a mixture of the two. And, you know, Janita, your answer really provides insight into the full scope of life. Again, it's never really always one thing or the other, but it's a combination of the two. In pursuing our dreams, we have things that we lose and things that we gain. And honestly, I think a valuable exercise from which we can all benefit is to take inventory of our life and our dream. In one column, put the things that you stand to lose as you pursue your dream. And then in the other column, put what you stand to gain. I really love what Tanya said, this idea of I want to pursue my dream full time but it has to put bread in my belly. It has to feed me and my family. And that's a huge step. But when we begin to inventory the quality and the dimensions of our dreams, then we begin to, again, amass this fuel to take our next step. So let's continue in this this idea of tip number three. Stefan, what event or events made you aware that growth is your only option? When we first started Youth on Fire, we started out doing free youth concerts in the north end of Hartford, Connecticut. Um, By our third concert at the Salvation Army, um, the youth just started coming up to us, telling us different things they were going through at home, at school, and we really didn't know how to deal with it or how to process it. And Yvonne Matthews from Urban League of Greater Hartford approached me and she said, well, why don't you become a state mentor? Um, As a mentor, you're a mandate reporter. It teaches you how to to process the trauma, how to handle the emotions of the child and how to deal effectively with the parents because the parents will lash out because the child is giving out information that pertains to their home. Um, that's when I sat down with some of the artists that came down from New York and Boston and, and pitched the idea of how would you guys feel about being mentors? I know the kids are talking to you guys. I know the parents have given you permission to talk to the kids on the phone to help with schoolwork and so forth. 
and they were up, they were open to it. Um, I think that's what kind of pushed me going to into the next step of Youth on Fire to adding the mentoring piece, um, wanting to help the children that we're going through. So in essence, you saw the magnitude of the need, Stefan, and you recognized that not moving forward is not an option. And that's right. tremendous. I think each of us are talking about a dream that fills a need. It doesn't just serve ourselves, but it's actually something that benefits other people. This has truly been an incredible journey with my guests, Tanya Mayberry, Stefan Palmer, and Janita McGuigan. I wanna thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to take us behind the veil, to show us that we all have to face the same challenges if we are going to move along and move ahead in life. So just to review, Let's go over those tips again. Tip number one, if your next step doesn't scare you, you might be moving in the wrong direction. Tip number two, in your journey to success, you just might get it wrong. And tip number three, you can't get there from here. You've got to go to grow. I wanna give a special thanks to our guests, sponsors, and you, our viewers, for giving us insights into taking our next steps. I'm Brian Martin, and join us next time here on Nearing the Next Step. I'm going to take my 